How's it going everybody? First things first, I've seen your comments on my Spider-Man video and all you guys keep saying that I look like Paul. Uh, I don't look like Paul. I don't know where you got that idea from, but I don't look like Paul. I don't know, uh, we don't look nothing alike. Like, look at us. We look nothing alike. There's nothing about us that look similar, even remotely similar. I don't look like Paul. Stop saying I look like Paul. You're making me sad. You're making me very frustrated with you guys, so stop it. I don't look like Paul. Fuck you saying I look like Paul. I don't look like him. Stop it. Stop saying that. Alright, now let's get to the video. Hey, we're gonna be talking about Moon Knight and how he's the greatest fucking character to ever exist. I love Moon Knight. Moon Knight is one of my favorite characters of all time, for good reason. He's just like me, for real. He's got the mental illness, uh, the bitches, the guys, and of course, as I said before, the mental illness. And uh, yeah, he's just super relatable as a character. Like, look at him. Look at him. I can't say that's not relatable whatsoever. I mean. I also have voices inside my head telling me to do very, very fucked up things and very violent things to other people. It happens to me all the time. It happens to everybody, of course. What else can you not like about the guy? He's just that cool. He's just that epic. So today, I've decided to basically review all of the Moon Knight stories I've ever read and just say what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and we're just gonna go through there. So uh, let's just get into it. The first volume. First volume I've ever read about Moon Knight was Charlie Houston's run on Moon Knight, and it was pretty fucking cool. The best part about it is the fact that you don't even need to know anything about Moon Knight to read it, because it basically goes through all the story, all the backstory, all the characters, all that other stuff, while also adding a little twist on these characters, like uh, talking about Kanchu. In the original comics, Kanchu was basically a real character. There was no real nuance to that, whether or not Kanchu was real or whether it was just a character, a figment of his imagination. In this comic, uh, it's put into question whether or not Moon Knight is actually crazy or if Contra is actually existing. Also, uh, he tears off a guy's face in like the first issue you see him in. So, you know, that's a pretty good start for a comic. He also breaks his fucking kneecap, so there's that. But yeah, really good run. Uh, lots of violence, lots of gore. Uh, it sort of tears off a bit during near the end of the run once it hits issue 30. But uh, really like it. So I'll give this one like a 9 out of 10. Super good run. Super highly recommend. It's like on Amazon right now. So you can buy the entire thing on Amazon if you want to. So uh, get to it if you want to. <laughs> Next volume is Vengeance of the Moon Knight. Now this one is kind of weird because this happens after the events of the other Moon Knight run I was talking about. But with sort of a different character. As I said before, I, don't, I think I've said that, I don't know. Moon Knight has dissociative identity disorder, so he has different alters in his mind, similar to like the Hulk, but uh, less destructive. Uh, so in this one, one of his alters, Jake Lockley, takes over as uh, Moon Knight because Mark is apparently dead, or at least that alter dies. It, it, it's super weird, but basically, Mark is gone, Jake is the main guy now, and he becomes Moon Knight, and his it's a bit more comedic than the last run, like it still has its like darker moments, but for the most part, it's a more com comedic run, and also like has crossovers with other characters like Deadpool and Spider-Man, so I wouldn't really call this a full-on Moon Knight run, it's more or less just a mini-series with like 12 issues, and it's okay I guess, I don't hate it, the art is really good, and some of the story beats are pretty fine, but for the most part, it's really just uh, Jake just trying to be a real hero, and he doesn't want to kill anybody, so you know, that's nice, him trying to figure out what being a hero really is so I guess that's pretty cool but overall I get this one really just a 7 or 6 out of 10 depending on how good the day is not great but I would still kind of recommend it if you want to know what happens to Mark and Jake after the events of the Charlie Houston run after that we have a mini series tie in with the Shadowland arc that was happening with Daredevil and stuff like that so uh, basically during the whole Shadowland arc when Daredevil was turning evil and shit like that Moon Knight came in and uh, he was trying to fight with uh, the other heroes against Daredevil. Also, Jake is still uh, Moon Knight, but then he stopped becoming uh, Jake because Mark came back again. It's a whole weird thing. Also, his brother, his brother's evil, and he tries to kill Moon Knight. That was something. The best part about this was uh, Mark coming back, and that's about it. I wouldn't say this is pretty great uh, little miniseries, but it's an easy read, so I still would technically recommend it if you want to know what happens to Jake and Mark in this run. Uh, and then things get really weird with the next run by Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, this run fucking sucks. I don't recommend it to anybody. Uh, all I know, all I remember at least, is that uh, Echo comes in. You know, Echo from that show from Marvel. She's totally different in the comics. Uh, he, she comes in, they bang, and uh, he also has different personalities now. Instead of uh, Stephen Grant and Jake Lockley, he now has Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Captain America. So, 
that's cool i guess overall not a really good run i don't recommend it two out of ten uh it fucking sucks don't read it at all after that moon knight takes a hiatus and then returns with uh declan shavy and warren ellis and this new moon knight run for six issues uh there's actually like a cycle of artists and writers that happened during this run because they wanted to make it more of an anthology series that was a whole thing most people just remember the warren and declan shavy uh part of that entire run uh also uh warren kind of went through some shit so if you're not really interested in the guy because of that uh, I, I i don't i don't fault you but it's still really good stuff it's still some really good stuff it's mostly just anthology stories of moon knight basically being a detective in this one it's also the first time we ever see uh, mr knight who becomes like a mainstay in this run especially just moon knight but more detective -y, i guess he also wears a pretty badass suit so that's pretty nice also there was this run uh issue where he basically just reenacts the raid but by himself and it's really fucking cool like he just kicks a guy and he throws up it's kind of fucking cool don't you think so i think it's really cool but yeah really good run uh the other uh two runs aren't as good as the first one but i would still recommend those other two as well so uh i would say for the most part 8 out of 10 8.5 out of 10 it doesn't fucking matter numbered scores are just basically worthless anyways but other than that really recommend so uh get to that if you want to next up we got jeff lemire's run on moon knight and it is really fucking good it is basically just a giant uh, psychological thriller story with uh mark being stuck in his own head and you know it's just him uh accepting himself accepting all of his personalities and accepting them as himself as who he is also uh Kanchu tries to take over his body and it's, that's a whole thing i don't want to spoil it because it's actually really fucking good and i really recommend you guys reading it but yeah it's 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 awesome honestly the art by uh, greg smallwood is probably some of the best art i've seen on a comic and it's just yeah it's just good i don't know what else to say it's really good uh the psychological aspects of it is also really good and i highly recommend 10 out of 10 would read again <laughs> bars you see what i did there after this we got the max bemis run which is not great uh it's definitely a big step down after the last run uh the good th stuff about this is that we find out that mark has a daughter uh jake was the one that impregnated his girlfriend so that was a big thing uh other than like the first five or six ish issues i want to say this is a really great run it kind of gets weird and not in a good way sort of weird just in a sort of weird sort of weird if you get what i mean I'm confusing myself as well when I say this story stuff, but yeah, I wouldn't highly recommend it. If you want to read what happens to Mark afterwards, then sure, go ahead, but uh, it's it's not a big thing for me. It's more or less a 5 out of 10, so read it if you want to. If you don't, um, it doesn't matter. Most people forget forgets about this run anyways, and not a lot of stuff happens after this run. After this, uh, Moon Knight is just in a couple miniseries and some one-shops, and uh, he fights the fucking Avengers. Uh, that was pretty bad, but it was also really funny seeing Thor get hit by his hammer a lot because apparently Thor's hammer is made by Moonrock and uh, Moon Knight can control that because he was given more powers by Khonshu. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a whole thing. Uh, but yeah, don't really recommend that entire little arc by the Avengers. But then we get Jet McCage run of Moon Knight and that's fucking amazing because Moon Knight fights vampires and he basically creates his own territory in New York and he protects that territory and creates a church called the Midnight Mission and he uses it to fight monsters and he gets a new villain called uh, Zodiac who basically tries to destroy his life so he could be better he's basically Moon Knight's Joker I guess but yeah it's it's a really fun run and I totally recommend it I made a couple videos on it like way back when when I used to just make videos on single issues and shit like that but it's really fucking cool also the art by alessandro capiccio capiccio i much i might have butchered that name i'm sorry but yeah it is it's fucking great i highly recommend that run to anybody who loves moon knight because it is basically the the pinnacle of what moon knight can be it has the psychological thriller it has the horror it has the monsters it has the sense of humor it's just it's the best stuff here it's great and I recommend it to anybody who loves Moon Knight. So check it out if you want to. 10 out of 10 would also read again. It's like the first vi five volumes are out. And also there's a sequel series called Avengers of Moon Knight. Just like the last series I talked about a little bit ago. That's also really good. Uh, you should read that too. There's only like two issues out right now. But overall, really good series. Highly recommend. Read it if you want to. Or don't. It doesn't matter. This is just a fucking video of me just gushing over how cool Moon Knight is. Did you know, as I said, did you know that he tore off a guy's face? I might have said that already, but he tore off a guy's fucking face. He also ate a dolphin. That that happened in Max Bemis' run. This is one of the reasons why I didn't like the run. He, he 
ate a dolphin. That was that was fucked up. I don't know why they, they showed that. That was weird. Uh, yeah, so that's about it today. Uh, I hope you guys read that run. Or if you don't, talk to me down below in the comments uh, what other stuff you want me to talk about and other runs that you want me to recommend. And I'll probably read them for you and recommend them. So uh, talk to me about like Moon Knight and stuff like that and comment that down below. Don't forget to like and comment, subscribe and all that good shit. Because if you don't, I'm going to put you over boiling hot oil. So uh, get ready to do that, please. And I'll see you next time.